Dear friends, today is Monday, March 13th, 2023, and you are watching the VPC Daily Video Devotional. And today we're going to actually look at two passages that are that are wonderful and significant. And first, let's turn in our Bibles to Colossians 1, 15 to 20. And this is one of the high points um, of what we call Christology, the views, views about Jesus' identity in the New Testament. And, and Paul wrote this section in Colossians. He wrote the letter to the Colossians. And before I read it, I just want to contrast the, uh, the view that we're going to hear from Paul with the way we generally understand truth and knowledge. We, we see the accumulation of truth as being a slow and cumulative process. So that through time, uh, we research things, we test things, we experiment, and we're slowly adding to our store of knowledge. And that's not always a, a, a progress. Sometimes there's regress in some fields. Um, but in general, it's, it's a process of overcoming sometimes our prejudices, the limitations in our perspectives. We are short-lived creatures, and so we only have so much time to grow in our knowledge. And, and we do other things rather than just try to penetrate reality more deeply and, and become more intelligent. And so um, this business of acquiring knowledge is communal and it's slow. And um, then there is this, what we call in the Christian world, um, the scandal of particularity. Because uh, we have this viewpoint that there's one person within the stream of history who's different. So I'm limited by my uh, background and perspective. I'm also enabled by it, but I'm limited by it too. I, I see the world in a certain way because of the language that I grew up in and the age that I am and the, the gender that I am and the race that I am and the background. All of these things shape to some extent my view of things, although they don't determine it. But then there's one person who is, as it were, uh, has a place within the, the, the stream of uh, culture, he has a, a he, you know, he's Jewish, he's a male, um, he's a first century person, he has all these characteristics like an ordinary human being does that feel like limitations. But at the other, on the other hand, he's unique, and um, this is called the scandal of particularity. And this is the way Paul describes it in Colossians 1, 15 through twenty. Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. In him, all things in heaven and on earth were created. So he is there at the beginning, the genesis of everything. He's in on the design of the universe. Things both visible and invisible, thrones, dominions, rulers, powers, all things have been created through him and also for him. That's an interesting phrase. So he's the agent of creation. The same uh, thing is expressed in John chapter 1 when John says, uh, all things were created through him. There was nothing that was created that wasn't created through him. It's sort of a double negative, but a similar, similar idea in John chapter 1. But they were also created for him. He, he's, not only the, uh, he's not only the creator, but he's also the, he also provides the purpose for creation, what, what it's for. He's before all things, and in him all things cohere. You know that word cohere? It's translated here, hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He's the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. He's the first person, only person to be really raised from the dead um, after you know a gruesome death like a crucifixion. Although in his ministry, he raised other people from the dead. And this is all so that he might come to have precedence, first place in all things. In him, the pleroma, the fullness of, the completeness of God was pleased to dwell. So that's a beautiful idea. It's that, that God graciously, without being forced in any way, decided to dwell in human form. And uh, we, he was pleased to do it. And through him, God was also pleased to reconcile to himself all things in heaven and on earth and ma making peace through the blood of the cross. This is the scandal of particularity. One person within the stream of history, within one location, you know, one geography, one race, one religion, one background, is nevertheless the center of ultimate truth. He's the heart of the whole uh, human story and indeed the cosmic story. 
That is a scandalous and amazing claim. Um, and it's not just made by Paul, it's also made by Jesus. And he makes it in a variety of places. One of those places is John chapter 3, uh, where in verses 12 through 15, Jesus says this, If I've told you about earthly things and you struggle to understand, you didn't believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him might have eternal life. He's claiming here that he, it's in his gift as the Son of Man to give the gift of eternal life. And uh, Mo, there's a strange story in uh, the Old Testament about Moses. The people of God have rebelled and sinned, and they are suffering from disease, a form of judgment. And Moses lifts up this serpent on a staff, and and all of the venom that is in the, and the sickness that that is uh, killing people is drawn into this serpent, and they are freed from what they're suffering. And in the same way, the Son of Man is lifted up to draw out of us all the things that that are deathly, that diminish our lives and that separate us from God. Um, so that's an amazing picture in this scripture, but. This claim that you see, Jesus has come down from heaven and you know, and and ascends back into heaven, and so he has this unique perspective. He 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 understands things about heaven that no one else can know and testify to. But he also is taking the experiences of um, of earth in all their drama and trauma up into the heart of heaven, and that puts him in a unique uh, position. So. These two, these two passages, along with many others, have encouraged Christians, Orthodox Christians, to believe that um, Christianity is, is, is not the same as other religions, that it is unique. And, of course, we know that if you compare religions, they're not all like different puzzle pieces that you can somehow fit together because they contradict one another in fundamental ways. Hinduism uh, is a polytheistic religion, many gods. And uh, the three great monothe monotheistic religions are, of course, Judaism, which is uh, very important but very small, and then Islam and Christianity, which constitute together, you know, over 50% of, the, of, of, of all the religious people in the world. And uh, they, of course, are monotheistic. They believe there's only one God. You can't believe both at the same time. It's a contradiction. And... Um, then within the monotheistic religions, Judaism, Christianity, again, and uh, Islam, there are differences when it comes to suffering and judgment, the character of salvation, the afterlife, the divine law, the nature of God, the, the, particularly the role of Jesus. Um, it's interesting, the cross, which is so central for Christians, is something that um, in Islam is is a, a blasphemy. The idea that, that, that Jesus could could die on a cross. They don't believe that. They insist that he was taken right up into heaven. It's a blasphemy to think of God suffering in this way. So to ignore these differences is to and the uniqueness of Christianity is to embrace a kind of intellectual dishonesty. Let's pray. Lord, give us the courage to hold on to the affirmations of ultimate truth, the uniqueness of our faith, but also give us the courage to celebrate common ground when we find it. Uh, this this takes a, a, a wise person to do this. And um, we know that your son is, is the only real answer to relativism, really to just the differences of, of culture and time that uh, shape so many beliefs that we have. Uh, his teaching is the pivot of world history and the key to its renewal. He is Alpha and Omega, the center of creation story. For this we thank you. Amen.